What I'll do now is I'll connect to the free Wi-Fi. All right, so now I'm gonna drive around, see what else we can capture. The Wi-Fi Pineapple is undoubtedly the hottest device in the network security pen testing sphere. So much so that getting your hands on one of these is a challenge, not even regarding the price. That being said, we could accomplish much of the same functionality by combining a Raspberry Pi with a Wi-Fi adapter that supports monitoring mode. Hell, if you own the Raspberry Pi 4, you already have a built-in monitoring mode capable interface. However, I still recommend getting a second adapter so that we can piggy bank off of one in case we want to make an access, which I'll be showing you guys how to do in this video. The Comfast CF938AC is what I'll be using for this build. Hailing in from the glorious People's Republic of China, this adapter supports speeds up to 1900 megabytes per second. It has a dual band wireless adapter that most importantly supports monitoring and master mode. This means that we can use it to not only sniff packets but in the form of an access point. Now what may be a drawback for some of you is the fact that it is not plug and play which means you would have to install some drivers for it, even on Linux. However, I'll show you guys how to do that and it should be no problem. Using the Raspberry Pi imager, we select our Pi model, OS version, and device onto which we will install to. If you plan to SSH, make sure you configure your wireless credentials and set a host name. We begin by SSHing into our Raspberry Pi, followed by a full system update and upgrade. Next, we install tools from the following repositories. TCP Dump, Airmon NG, Ethercap, DHCPD, Wireshark, and Wi-Fi. Now, for all those installing RTL 8814AU drivers, Realtek drivers, we're gonna go ahead and install the headers using the following command. Now that that's complete, let's go ahead and create a directory to clone the repository into. Head into the directory and get cloned from the following link. And as a root user, run the install script. Now that we've rebooted, we can go ahead and confirm that our interface is up and working using the iwconfig commands. And as you guys can see, we now have a second wireless interface named Wi-Fi RTL 8814AU. And this is going to be the one that we're going to use to actually capture other packets. Now, we want to make sure that we have two wireless interfaces. Now, here's the catch. We're going to be using the built-in Wi-Fi adapter to actually authenticate to a real network in case we want to do something like create a fake access point, in which case we'd use the second interface as the actual access points, or as in the evil twin. Now, in order to enable monitoring mode on the second wireless adapter, we're going to go ahead and run sudo airmon ng, followed by starts and the name of the wireless adapter. Now we can go ahead and actually test out our card and capture some foreign packets using the commands tcp dump i for interface and the name of the interface. And there it is. So what I'm seeing here is routers of different Wi-Fi networks communicating with devices on their LANs. Alright gang, so I pulled up to a shopping center, very busy, a lot of activity going on. Right. So I got my laptop pulled up here because obviously I'm not going to have a Raspberry Pi to VNC into. I'm booting off Kali, but it's the same exact adapter and I got monitor mode enabled, right? So let's see what kind of packets we can capture. Obviously Wireshark is going to be the most efficient tool for this. I think I just saw a Texas instrument. <laughs> Hold up, someone got a calculator here or what? Got some broadcast frames. And here we've got four motor, a Zaxcell router, some Google device talking to Asus tech. And the headers is really all I got to see for, you know, discerning this kind of traffic. Right, so now I'm going to drive around, see what else we can capture. Hmm, I wonder what's, what kind of data we can capture at H&M. Really curious. Let's camp out here for a bit, see what we can pick up. Yeah, I bet the lens crafter guy in there has like a Bitcoin mining farm in here. Hopefully rat his ass out. Alright, so I've captured a pretty sizable amount of frames here. I'm mostly seeing 802.11, which is Wi-Fi. I have some AWDL, which is... 
I believe the Apple protocol for airdrop and that kind of stuff, peer-to-peer -peer Apple. Oh, of course we got Teslas over here. So if you want to hijack a Tesla, capture its handshake, you know, boot it off and then try to crack the authentication request using a brute forcer if you want. Rocky.txt. This is still crazy. We have this Texas instrument here. Let's see if we can see anything in the string data. <laughs> Now, in case you don't want to follow along, I went ahead and created the scripts that pretty much automates the entire process with all the configurations, installations, and even the IP tables. So yeah, the whole nine yards. So if you don't feel like following along and doing all the steps manually, feel free to go down in the description, download the scripts, and run it yourself. You're welcome! Now, for our access point, we're going to have to install host APD, which is host, access point daemon, as well as DNS mass Q, which will be used for both DHCP assignment as well as DNS. The first thing we're going to do is create our host apd.conf file and open it inside a text editor. For the first line, we're going to go ahead and put the interface that it's going to run on, being of course the interface, the monitor mode adapter. Next line is going to be the driver for it. Now, actually most Realtek devices, including this one, are going to use the Realtek driver NL80211. The SSID, of course, is the name of the Wi-Fi network that you want to clone or pirate, in my case McDonald's. You know, nothing like a good free McDonald's Wi-Fi. We set the frequency to 2.4 gigahertz using HW underscore mog equals G. We set our channel to one. As to accept and authenticate all MAC addresses besides the ones in our denial list, we set MAC address access control list equal to zero. And in order to ensure that our broadcast SSID is visible, we set ignore broadcast underscore SSID zero. And finally, we can start our access point using host apd space host apd.conf and whatever path that you created this config in. And if you did everything correctly, it should work immediately. No problems. Keep this window active and open a new terminal. It's time to configure our DHCP server. Create your DNS mass queue conf file. Now, of course, we set our interface to our monitor mode adapter. Next, we declare our DHCP scope using DHCP range followed by the range of IP addresses that you wish to be in your subnet scope. Make sure you include the right subnet mass as well as the lease time. What I'm going to do is 24 hours. Next, we declare our DHCP route using DHCP-option. And next, we declare our DNS server. I'm going to be using Cloudflare's 1.1.1.1. However, you can also use Google 8.8.8. .8 we tell it to log the queries, log the DHCP connections, and finally, we listen on our local host, 127.0.0.1. Next, we have to manually assign the IP address to our wireless interface, which of course is going to be the same one we use as the DHCP server host. We do this with ifconfig, the name of the wireless interface, up, followed by the IP address and the net mask, which of course is going to be our subnet mask. And now for proper routing, we're going to have to add this address and subnet mask to our routing table. And double check that it's there using routes, option N. Now before we can fire off our DNS DHCP server, we have to make sure that there are no services running on port 63 for DNS or 67, 68 for DHCP for that matter. The DNS mask queue daemon actually enables itself in system D by default, so you definitely want to check on the status and disable it if it's already up. Now we can finally start our DNS mask queue DHCP server using DNS mask queue option C DNS mask queue.com. And now of course it can assign IP addresses to devices that authenticate to it. However, we still need to set up routing to our other interface, so let's do that. Open a new terminal and install IP tables if you don't have it already. Next, run the following commands to forward traffic from the wireless interface to the interface on which we have the DHCP and fake access point running. And finally, using echo, we write the value 1 into the kernel parameter to enable IP forwarding, allowing us to forward packets between networks and use NATs. Hey guys, so here we have our victim Obama phone. Now, just looking for a free network, right? No cellular data. I want a free Wi-Fi. I'm at McDonald's. Here it is. It's showing up, and I'm able to authenticate to it. Now, I already did this on my iPhone, actually, and as you guys can see here in the DNS DHCP stream the iphone was assigned an ip address and i performed some queries on it on the internet and we can see those packets showing right here what i'll do now is i'll connect to the free wi-fi and immediately it obtains an ip address and the dhcp scope assigns already sending packets from google you know this android is screaming packets on across the internet to google as androids tend to do look at all this stuff google apis I'm getting replies from google servers and over here the ap is showing the fact that the device is connected as well 
Now every single packet sent from this phone will get intercepted by the access point before it goes off into it. So let's just test this out. Let's say I want to go to McDonald's. Now immediately I open Chrome and it's communicating with Google and all of this. I already went ahead and typed it in so you know I can save time doing that. And it says connection is not private. I'm going to go ahead and proceed anyways. And there we have it. All of our traffic is being read. Well, that's going to do it for today's video. So hopefully you guys enjoyed it and learned something. In the future, I definitely intend to get more into packet analysis, as well as copying handshakes and things like that. Let me know what you guys want to see next. And lastly, I'd like to thank you all for the support. The recent growth on this channel has just been exponential and unprecedented. Gained a thousand and a half subscribers in less than a week, which is just absolutely insane. So thank you all for subscribing and engaging with the recent video. And I'm very excited about the future of this channel. I have big things coming for all y'all. So stay tuned. We're going to make it happen. И также благодарю всех русскоязычных подписчиков и зрителей, которые оставили комментарии на последнем ролике. Всем спасибо. See you guys later.